Hello and welcome to Diecast Restos for my November entry to the Three Blind Mice monthly build off. My name's Jason and this is the Hot Wheels T9701 Aston Martin 177. It is still produced by Mattel, having been first launched in 2011. This play worn example is a 2011 model, indicated by the code D24 on the base. The D is the year identifier, and the 24 refers to the 24th week of the year when the model was produced. Like I say, the model is a bit battle scarred, with a big gouge in the windshield and paint loss on the wheels. The bodywork is okay, but the tampos have been worn away a bit. The casting is based on the Aston Martin 177, so called as the number of vehicles produced was 77. And here is an image of one of those 77. My intention with this build is to not go wild with it. Instead, I want to try and emphasise its elegance and its British roots. So I won't go hacking bits off like I did in the last build. It will just be a bit of refining, such as swapping out the massive five spoke wheels for something more similar to the production car. The car itself was Aston Martin's flagship two-door coupe sports car, built between 2009 and 2012, at a cost to buyers of over 1.1 million pounds, or around 1.8 million US dollars in 2009. It was first revealed, though mostly kept veiled, at the 2008 Paris Motor Show. It was fully revealed, along with its specifications, at the 2009 Geneva Motor Show. It has a full carbon fibre monocoque chassis covered in a handcrafted aluminium body. It is powered by a 7.3 litre Cosworth V12, an engine derived from mating two of Ford's Duratec V6s. When the car was first delivered, Aston Martin claimed that their 750 horsepower unit was the most powerful naturally aspirated production engine in the world. Its top speed is approximately 220 miles per hour and it accelerates from 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. The car weighs 1630 kilograms or 3594 pounds. Designer Marek Reichmann's works other than the 177 include Aston Martin's DBS, Rapide, 2012 Vanquish and the Vulcan as well as Rolls-Royce's Phantom 7. He was lead designer on the 2003 Range Rover in addition, he also directed the design of the Aston Martin DB10 for the James Bond Spectre film. The 177 also had a seven car run towards the end of production called the Q series. These had the same specification and performance figures as the regular production 177, but featured unique liveries and interior colour schemes. One Q series example was on sale in Dubai in 2012 for 2.9 million US dollars. Now to strip the paint. Each 177 is uniquely specced out, so each owner from new had their say in interior design, colour, stitching, etc. on top of the external paint. The rear window is a very small hatch, where the cross member and whole rear suspension can be seen. Between the cross member is a very modest storage compartment, which equates to the entire storage capacity of the 177. But this isn't a car designed for practicality. It is a car designed to be the best of the best, the ultimate Aston Martin that 77 lucky owners could tweak to their exact needs, wants and desires. As such, this is the direction I'm taking with this casting. It's definitely as close to any Aston as I'll ever own, so I might as well do it to my tastes. So I've given the interior a tan coat, as I think that will look superb alongside my chosen exterior shade. It should dry a bit more matte than it's looking freshly painted. I'm still trying to sort out that gouged windscreen here. It's time to give it a polish using a buffing attachment. Hopefully that will be it, so I dunk it in polish for an added shine. I'm a bit concerned that this very dark tinted window unit will obscure my interior detail. I always hate on die cast cars where the model has an interior, yet its windows are massively tinted and it completely obscures the interior itself. 
Anyway, for now, I retreat the wheels to add them to my box of spares. They seem to look good as new. They really aren't suited to an Aston though in my opinion. Now I apply my custom colour of choice. Yup, British Racing Green. How predictable. I think with a tan interior, this colour combo will be superb. A real classic mix. To give it a bit more zing, I'll also clear coat in pearl off camera for a metallic sparkle. Meanwhile, the plastic base I coat in black. The dried interior is coated in Citadel to present a more leather-like look. Now onto the chrome detailing. I had originally tried to draw on the chrome along the grill lines. Failing that task, I decided to coat the whole thing in chrome, then fill the gaps with my micron pen. I take the 1mm Molotow and chrome up the entire centre console, similar to the interiors on some 177 examples. I then detail further using the micron pen. And here I fill in those gaps in the grill to greater success. Looking much better than before already. This then gets a coating of Citadel 2. The headlights were a headache for me. I usually put down a base layer of chrome, go over in white paint very lightly, and then coat with Citadel. I copied that process for this casting, but the light clusters are just so large, it looked clunky and basic. It took me a number of attempts to get it looking anywhere close to acceptable. In the meantime though, I've highlighted the badge, titanium vents, side panels and the rear light that spans the width of the car like a boomerang. Here I'm putting on the white as I mentioned before. Following this effort, I've bought some Uniposca 0.7mm paint pens for detailing, which will be interesting to use on my next custom. I bought one in red too to try in place of the sharpie, though I do like the sharpie over chrome effect. That layering is simple yet effective. Now the entire casting gets doused in Citadel. Okay, so now it's time to reassemble my 177. First in is the restored windscreen. It's not the best, and the buffing marks are more visible than on a clear piece due to the tint. Not much I could do about that, sadly. Anyway, in goes my custom interior. Then the base with green light wheels pre-attached slots in via the grill and screwed in at the back. So here is how my reasonably play-worn Aston Martin 177 looked to start off with. It had a deep gouge in the windshield, and the tampos had worn away slightly. Those chunky 5-spoke OH5 wheels had lost their silver colour, and generally didn't really suit this casting anyway. The back end was pretty anonymous, so it was time to make this 177 a bit more bespoke. So here it is in its pearl coated British racing green, coupled with a sadly barely visible tan and chrome interior. The front grille is bearing its teeth in chrome as well, while the green light wheels are less brash than the Hot Wheels set it started out with. 
They aren't perfect, but they are probably my most sedate set that I had that I thought would suit. The rear light, as I said earlier, is looking good using the Sharpie and Chrome layering technique. If you can indeed call it a technique. But the headlights have let me down a little bit on this one. They're a bit basic, so I'll try to improve that on my next custom build. Also, the windscreen is a bit flat after sanding away the gouge in the center. So do check out all the other builders efforts and please leave a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed this one. That just leaves me to say thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.